Inside Live from Dogleg Brewery in Fort Worth, Texas, it's time for You Can't Brew That on Television. Now, here are your hosts, Brewmeisters Kyle and the Reverend Ryan Bono. And welcome to a hopefully glitch-free episode of You Can't Brew That on Television. We are your hosts. I am the Reverend Ryan Bono. And I am Kyle Inception LaPointe. And we are coming to you live from the Dogleg Studios to do what we do every week, try to bridge the gap between frat boy... And beer snob. I, there we go. I, I didn't know. I, 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 I didn't know. I, didn't know I was gonna pick that up. And beer snob. We're, <laughs> we're gonna have. We're gonna have that perfected by next week. We promise. Um, the the reason we didn't have time to perfect our intro is because we've got a lot of material lined up tonight. We had to drop probably papers. twenty minutes of intro. Yeah, we we've got papers, lots and lots of papers. We've got beer. Which One of them has writing on, on it. Here in just a second. Let, let's tell everybody what we're going to talk about tonight. Tonight we're going to talk about a chalk beer, which yeah. we're excited about. Um, neither of us ever had this particular uh, chalk. We we both had chalk beers yep. and been very pleased with them. But uh, this particular chalk beer is going to be new to both of us. So you're going to be getting a very candid tasting tonight. That's right. That's what we do. Um, we're, we're also going to talk about do some uh, some news about upcoming events. Uh, you know, RAW and Blue Bonnet. Hell, we got the Super Bowl coming up here, so we got some news about yeah, that. Yeah, that that's going to be really big. Uh, have we got trivia tonight? Or yes, we do. Okay, yes. yeah, we we've got trivia for tonight. Okay, and then we're going to be at at some point we're going to tee where we're going to tell you guys that we're going to make a big announcement about an interview that we recently yep. did. Yep. Uh, most of you know what it is, but if not, uh, be excited because this is. Pretty huge. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It, it went well. So hopefully and you guys will like it. We're going to talk about glassware. You can see tonight we, we made sure to get the proper glass for the beer we're going to be tasting. Yeah, we're we're going to be talking about the glass you select for your beer and how it makes, uh, it actually does make a difference. And then we're, at some point, we're going to rerun the my the Brew Buddy Yep, the Brew event. Buddy for everybody who bailed out yeah, of the last it. one. This was a lot of fun. We made a little promo segment that... Uh, you know, just one of our ideas. We always have a lot of ideas when we're looking at different commercials. Most of them are not very good. Hey, yeah, but this one, uh, this Richard one was and I decided good. to run with. Uh, unbeknownst to Bono, we like to trick each other and, and bring in surprise content every now and again. That's what, what this one was. So it was a lot of fun for Bono to watch this while we were doing it last week. And, and uh, I'll, I'll tell that story later. Let's drink some beer. Let's open a beer. All right. Tonight's beer, as we mentioned, is Chalk Winner. And this is a Baltic pourer. This is a relatively they new... they screw tops. That's much harder to open with. Oh, they do have screw yeah. tops. It, Baltic pourer is a relatively new style to the commercial um, the, the commercial side of things. It's something that's been homebrewed for a while. You see Baltic porters at some of the uh, craft breweries, yeah. like Chalk. Like, I mean, they've got uh, a brewery there. So you'll see a Baltic porter. Essentially what you get with a Baltic porter is it's supposed to be the biggest, roastiest, most imperialized... Uh, version of a Baltic and porter there is. This, uh, of a porter. this certainly is not letting down. I, I'm getting a lot of roasted malt there in the aroma, and I, I think I'm getting some alcohol in the aroma. It, it's not too sharp though. It, it's, it's just it's there though. Hmm. Uh, hop uh, hop is kind of subdued. I don't really smell a whole lot of hops going on in there. There's there's a, a little there's something, but yeah, I almost get. Uh... You know, almost a slight bit of phenol in there, to be honest with you. Phenolics meaning like... Um, Man, why don't you tell everybody what phenol... Some medicinal type smell. It's not... It's probably more of the acrid note from the roast, because they probably way overdid it in the roast. Yeah, I did. That, that's definitely the roast. And so you through. can confuse those two things. You can get phenolics, though, from the acrid roast. That, that's part of it. And uh, Phenolics also come... They, they, they can be a flaw. Typically, you're not going to find that. In a I don't think beer, this though. is a flaw. Yeah, that, that's, that, I think that's just accurate from the roast. But overall, I mean, this is this is a nice balanced beer. I think it, it's definitely what a port, what a big porter should be. It's very young. I wonder what the alcohol content is on this. It seems like it would be better. Yeah, the alcohol is is kind of big. Well, I imagine Baltic porters start generally what around seven and a half, eight percent, something like that. So just to start at that style, that's where you got to be. And this is a, an Oklahoma brewery. So one thing you'll notice about that, unlike Texas, they don't have to put the alcohol percentage on every bottle, yeah. and they didn't. So uh, we don't know. So, <laughs> Rich, while we're broadcasting, how about you look up the alcohol percentage, please, for us on the Chalk Winner? But overall, you know, I'd say it's a little lighter body than I was hoping. It, it's lighter. It's definitely lighter than I was anticipating. Yeah, it's a it's a drier. Uh, an overall drier beer, which I I, th I think Baltics though can be a light body. It's possible. 
we could uh, read the style guidelines and yeah, check I'm out what we're supposed to be. Style make. guideline right here. So uh, Bono's going to load that up. But basically, what I'm looking for in, in a Baltic Porter is traditionally bigger in everything. You've got a bigger, Gen generally quite full-bodied and smooth. Yep. Yeah, it should be bigger. And a, and a well-aged alcohol warmth, medium to medium high carbonation, which we're definitely getting yep. here. Not heavy on the tongue due to carbonation level. So that that could be what we're uh, that could be the the difference in body that we're noticing is that it, well, it is so heavily carbonated. I, I just I tell you this, what I feel like I'm getting on here is I feel like they got a really really good attenuation on this because. From what I'm tasting, it's a little dry. I get the dryness, and I get some uh, I get some warmth on there, but yeah. it's hidden with the bubbles and everything you got in there. So you, there's there's you, a you lot. You can get messed up on this. There's I'll a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah right there's now. a lot going on in this beer. So if you just told somebody this was a regular porter and didn't mention to the fact that it had eight or nine percent alcohol or whatever it does, they yeah. would probably be walking in yeah. a stupor. Yeah, they, they would not be going well. So I like it. Yeah, me it's too. Not bad. This is this is a good beer, hmm. and. There, I, I went through a phase where I was, I had a borderline obsession with porters, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think this. And then he also went through a phase where he drank that style of beer a lot. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, so, porters are a. Uh, a yeah, that's a, enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, tonight what, we got some news. Let, let's talk about. Do you want uh, to do trivia first or news first? All right, let's do trivia. Let's do you, trivia. You first. got me sold on trivia. So can I? You get to answer it because yeah, I made say it. Play. And I'm yeah, working on the, the Chuck ABV, too. So. Oh, well, I can say the question if you want. No, I got it. Right, I got it. Well, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tonight, the trivia. What were the beers consumed during the 2009 Beer Summit, Bono? <laughs> what? The Beer Summit. You remember Obama's debacle? Oh, oh, the Beer Summit. The Beer Summit. I'm wondering. It's two years past now. I feel, Do you I remember? Feel, I feel like Blue Moon was there. I got to have... Uh, I, I got to have three. There's rumor that there was a fourth, but oh, wow. I don't, that, that's just a rumor. I'm I'm fairly I'm fairly certain Budweiser was there. Blue Moon. I'm gonna go with Budweiser, Blue Moon, and Sam Adams. That's close. That's really close. Uh, best regards that I was able to figure out, and I actually had a conflicting opinion at one point. They they had subbed in uh, Sam Adams for Red Stripe, but oh, I'm fairly certain Red. it was Red Stripe. That's uh, be because the president's from uh, Jamaica, right? right? Isn't he from Jamaica? Well, originally, but then he moved here and forged his. Honky's throwing Jamaica. Miller Bud and Natty Light out there. Yeah, that, no, it was actually Bud Light, okay. Red Stripe, and Blue Moon. Oh yeah, so, so yeah, I'll you were not that moon. far off, and. Uh, which is funny because Bud Light, owned by a Belgian company, yeah. uh, Blue Moon, owned by the biggest surviving and still manufactured and owned by American company company that there right. is, they per basically Miller and Coors together provide about what forty percent of the market share. Something like beer. that, yeah. Um, and then the third one is Red Stripe, Jamaican owned, Jamaican made. And, and all of this just goes to prove that President Obama loves American small mm -hmm. business, as long as small business. Provides forty percent of the market share for selling beer. So let's talk about news. <laughs> All right, what do we got? We've got so we've got some news from the RAR that you were going to bring us. Yeah, well, I mean, I just want to talk about uh, you know it's kind of joint and hand in hand with uh, the Super Bowl that's coming up. Yeah. We got Super Bowl what twelve days from now, thirteen days, right here Whatever in is. beautiful Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. CFW. Uh, we're lucky. Speaking of Obama, that Chicago didn't win because yeah. he had said he was going to make a showing. Which which was gonna which make was going traffic to traffic around here even awful. worse. Yeah. yeah, you imagine what he would have to what would shut down DFW and all this other thing. Uh, but, but anyway, that would have been bad. But you know, I mean, can't begrudge a guy. I mean, it's his hometown. If you want to yeah. go see the Super Bowl, you know, wants to watch some football. Good for him. Um, and, and, and good. You know, I like a, a you know a president that's big into their American sports. We don't typically have one that's not. But uh, anyway, RAR is doing their tours that they normally do a tour on Wednesdays at 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock, and they do a tour on Saturdays from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Well, on this tour, on this week, they're going to be doing a tour every weekday. Uh, actually, two tours. I believe one at 11 and one at 3. And you can look that up on their website. I'm fairly certain that's right. So the week uh, before the Super Bowl, they'll have tours all week. So if you guys are in town or anything's going on and you got you know the week off uh, for holiday week like most companies do for Super Bowl, um, that that is that is a national week off holiday, right? Yeah, I, I okay. believe I believe so. so. So for all you fans of the Packers or the Steelers, 
Packers. The Packers. No, my my old man's watching. He's or a big the fan. Steelers. He's he's a he's a Packer. So I yeah I don't I don't really know what a Pittsburgh accent would be. Uh, neither do I. I, yeah. I think it um I think it's a series of clicks and grunts. But I'm not hundred <laughs> percent sure. Anyway, welcome to our Pittsburgh viewers. Another the uh, Rars back up and running. They're fully functional. We were over there the other day while they were brewing one of their Reds. Um, it it was a lot of fun. We we should we tease our. I think, I, th- I think it's time. Let's go. We'll tease it. Uh, the, we've secured what is quite possibly the, the biggest milestone to date for uh, You Can't Brew That on Television. And we interviewed Fritz Rahr on Friday. Jen Beer Goddess helped us with the interview. Yep. She's going to be our official interviewer from here on out. Along with the brewers there at Rahr. Yeah. Um, Austin, Ka- Kyle, and I, Kyle and I interviewed some of the younger guys that actually work there. Mm-hmm. And I think that's how it's going to go from here on out, where when I, we're going to try to do brewery interviews, and Jen will actually interview the brewer, the guy in charge, the CEO, you know, whoever is important. She's our straight man. She, yeah. No and, pun intended. Uh, you know, yeah. Sorry. For, no, for, yeah, sorry, for, sorry, Jen. She's very much not the man. No, she's certainly not. the essence of, of womanhood, but that's okay. She's, she's probably uh, the only one that takes it seriously when we so, go on So Jen like will be that. the straight, yeah, that's a good point. Jen definitely is the straight man as far as taking it seriously. Seriously, and then Kyle and I will goof around with the workers. They just have to ask them inappropriate questions. Really, and and make inappropriate remarks to their answers. So, which is how it went on Friday (laughs) when we followed up with our interview. So, so So. be excited about that. The interview itself is in post production right now, and we also have to give a shout out to our volunteer film crew, Jordan and Harvin. They hooked us up with some uh, Uh nice HD rig and some expert handling for the event. And I'm really hoping they can show up for uh, some of our live tapings here for, for our show. Consummate so professionals. Those guys were fantastic. Yeah, they're awesome. And, you know, I'd like to treat them here. So if you guys are watching, please come to one of our shows and we'll load you up on all of this high alcohol Baltic porter that is making me dizzy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling this episode's going to get sillier as it goes on. <laughs> not, not, that, not that any of our episodes don't, but this is going to be one of those ones, like, like the first one ever when we were drinking the 13% by, val- by volume Rasan that and uh, yeah it, yeah we started out and we would uh, we definitely did more pre-show warm-ups yeah uh, yeah we that's why we, we used to drink a lot before the show yeah we were a little nervous i mean i wouldn't say we were nervous to the point where we couldn't uh, you know get up and just bullshit we were, we were definitely shaking we were you know it was like okay man we're going to be you know we're going to be internet tv stars we got to be good here so let's get wasted <laughs> <laughs> So also work, 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 work. RAR, work, work. RAR is is going to be producing uh, their Imperial Oatmeal Stout, we, and that is a big piece of news that we wanted mm-hmm. to share with you guys tonight. Kyle, you were fortunate enough to taste the RAR Imperial Stout right out of the fermenter. Yeah, what did awesome. you think? It, it's fantastic. I've had the recipe before. Um, it's kind of a collaboration brew. You know, I know some of the guys who yeah. helped out with the recipe and whatnot. Um, RAR is just awesome about bringing in the community and bringing in everybody else around them involved into their brewery, opening their doors, and really doing a good job to be part of the community in the Fort Worth area. And anyway, this, uh, this recipe, we tried some of that, and it's phenomenal. The, the normal recipe is actually a little fuller bodied than what it turned out to be. Uh, made some notes, talked to the guys who were there brewing it, and um, they basically said, well, you know, it's not as full bodied, but what I what I remarked was that it, it tasted it tasted bigger. Yeah. And then we discussed it and what I was tasting was it tasted creamier than normal because the drier body uh, left the creaminess of the oats from the oatmeal. That makes sense. And, and to, to be a broader a bigger part of the picture. And for those of you, beer. And for those of you watching at home, whenever you do have an oatmeal style, well, oatmeal and a beer adds a, a very velvety and smooth mouthfeel and then that's what Kyle's discussing is is that velvety kind of creamy mouthfeel that that you're getting out of the oats it's wow fantastic. so um, yeah mark um, <laughs> so wow. anyway uh, what we've got going we've got raw doing their thing it's fantastic. They're going to put those out in bombers. Love their new bottling line, so they have the ability to do special series like that and release them in larger bottles, and, and everybody can store those and sell those and save them for years. Because the beers come out, they're going to be better in a few years. So, All right, Rich, why don't you roll the Brew Buddy? We're sitting here drinking. Let's roll Brew Buddy. 
Brew buddy, brew buddy, whenever I brew, he brews, brew buddy, brew buddy. I'll teach him everything that I know. Brew buddy is here, it's time to talk about beer. Brew buddy, don't pout, cause we're brewing up a dry stout. Brew buddy, brew buddy, brew buddy and me. <laughs> Now, if I could only get one of those dolls and so Bono's picture on the front of it, oh, man, that would just make my day. If, even if I'm brewing and he's not around, I could still have so, my brew buddy. To add, to add a, little more, a little more humor to this, my dad informs me, and I had completely forgotten about this, my dad informs me that when we were kids, and, and this commercial was popular, uh, apparently... He and my sister used to tease me relentlessly every time it came on, <laughs> and, and like they always told me it was my favorite commercial. And my my sister at one point as and this I just found out the other day. Um, my sister as a gag gift for my birthday one year wanted to get me a my buddy, like like j just to torment me even further. And so I guess you don't remember your childhood. They had to tell you that. No, I've drank since then. Okay. I thought you drank during then, and maybe that was yeah, your that's, issue. That's possible, That too. was back during his scotch days. Oh, uh, rum? Oh. Um, well, because I was Cuban when I was younger, <laughs> and now I'm Irish. Now you're so Irish? It was rum back then. Okay. Well, that was a lot of fun to make. We're going to do some more of those uh, kind of out of production. Like, we do the production outside of the show and, and throw the clips up there. Kind of like, uh, like the honky out there, you know, the whitest guy we know. Yeah. He's do doing some of our beer app reviews, and we're going to have another one of those coming up. In fact, I downloaded, well, didn't really download it because you don't download it, but I, I was messing around with this one uh, app here today. You know, I'll just tease it like that, and we'll, we'll leave it. Yeah, uh, we're, we're both going to give that one a shot, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll probably review that for a future episode. Yep, seems pretty cool from what I saw on it. It's, it's a little different, but... So let's talk about glassware. You ready? Let's do it. All right. Now... <clears throat> You all see that we were sure to pour this in snifters. Snifters. And um, we'll, we'll get to those here in a few minutes because I wanted to start with the Is very... Is snifter a character on the Jersey Shore? I don't know. Let me look. I'll, let me write that down. Okay. S snifter? Snifter. Snifter. I'm pretty sure that's snifter. Okay. Okay. So we've got snifters, which is, uh, you know, typically reserved for, for more of a bigger aperitif like a port or a sherry. Uh, is where they generally are seen more often, right? Yes, that's true. And, and I, I, I didn't have snifters down for tonight. And I, I, I should have thought ahead to look at tonight's beer. I, I, I have that for the next time we talk about class. There you right? go. So look forward to that one. Because I did want to start with the, the very basic glass you drink beer out of. And that is, of course, the standard pint glass. Pint glass. You got a standard pint glass right here. Rich is going to throw a picture of one up here in a few minutes. <clears throat> Standard pint glass is really a, a triumph of function over form. Yep. It, it is something that bars use en masse because it's easy to stack, it doesn't ship easily, and it, it really started, it, we could do a whole episode just on the development of the pint glass, right. but or we're going to try to cut out a lot of that. Um, the, the, the Standard pint glass really, well, though, was developed in England because you, you had all different measures of beer, and, and they wanted one standard measure, and, that, and that's where the pint glass came from. Mm -hmm. So, And it's kind of the scourge uh, of the beer drinking community, uh, a little bit. You know, everybody appreciates it and its ability to be cleaned and ability to go, but like in, uh, in some of the more beer, true beer cultures, like over in, uh, in Belgium, for yeah. instance, they would take offense of anybody serving a beer in a glass that does not make the beer better. Certainly one of their beers. Like this Snifter, um, you know, one thing I know is, I'd say that a weakness in this beer is the aroma. You definitely don't get any of the hops. It's very acrid to the point of being phenolic, but the taste is undeniably different than, the, than that smell. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's phenomenal. It's this a, is it's one a, that I would really not good want... Beer. This is one that I would not want to snerve in a sir, snerve. Snerve I wouldn't snerve it either. I, 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 wouldn't, I would definitely never snerve this beer. Mm -hmm. But I, I would think that this would be more acceptable in, in a goblet or a mug, which we'll get to here in a few minutes. Yeah, oh, or even a pint glass. Or even, or even just a standard pint glass. Because essentially the pint glass, the problem with it is it's going gonna, it's gonna to let all the aromas out. So you're not going to see or, or you're not going to have that, that smell right when you put your nose up to it, except for maybe your first drink. 
that's why people have a problem with it. Yeah, I mean, but it, it does what it does. Yeah, it, it's it, it's a it does yeah, exactly it does what it does. Yeah, it's, it's a pie crust, and you know something in the last few years that that has gone on is. Certain certain breweries, certain beer makers have discovered that if you put small divots in the bottom of your glass, the the CO two or the nitrogen or gas happens to be in that particular beer gets trapped in these little divots at the bottom of your pint glass, and it releases slowly as you're drinking rather than all at once. And and what that does is that enables your carbonation to last. Is that kind of like the uh, the Carlin? You know, you only release a little bit of yeah, the gas. Yeah, exactly. At first. Oh, you only release a little bit at first. Right. And then you release the rest later. Hey, to Carlin. So, and what that's called, a, that's called a pitted glass. Okay. And this has made a little bit, this has added a little bit of functionality to standard pint glass. Yep. And it's something that works specific, very well for this. There's one right there. Actually, a lot of breweries will put um, various logos on the bottom of the glass in the pits in, uh, or the divots. And that's really we kind of We should put our logo in our pits. We should. We should. Maybe divot it out a little uh-huh. bit and pit it up. So <clears throat> what's the next glass, man? The Imperial Pint. The Imperial Pint. Yep. I. E. Imperial means like old school America, right? Yes. England, Englandville? Yeah. Actually, um, the Imperial Pint came about because when you get these beers with really with a really big head, for instance, anything nitrogenated, which we know to be cream ale, over there on the other side of the pond. But when, whenever you, whenever you get <laughs> when it, whenever you get a nitrogenated beer, th- there's an enormous amount of head on it. it. I mean, it's something something we've all noticed that that works really well. Something we've all noticed, and when you try to pour nitrogenated beer into a standard pint glass, you end up having less beer because there's so much of that big nitrogen head at the top. So the Imperial Pint came about as a way for uh, brewmasters, bartenders to still pour a whole pint into a glass while still being able to fit the head in the glass. And that's why whenever you order a Guinness... Wait, can we put the uh, like some sort of an alarm sound, Richard? Or is there any sort of thing we can throw in here, maybe in the future? Um, I'm going to completely disagree. All right, let's hear it. All right, my my research on this... Is, uh, <coughs> there we go. Oh, that's perfect. There it is. Man, that, I was wrong. <laughs> I hear it now. No, no, no. And, and you could be right. I don't know. Everybody's got their different uh, you know, researchers and where they're looking and whatnot, but... What I had always heard was that the reason why those pint glasses came about in the way that they did was so that when you stack them on a shelf, the ribs at the top would stop the tops of the glasses from touching each other and therefore not allow the tops to get chipped because the way they stored their glasses, they stored them upright where where the actual lips could hit on older glasses, so that's why they started making it and wowing it out the way they did. And and that uh, that is partially true. They needed a bigger pint glass. They needed a bigger glass to be able to get a full full pint of the head right. into the same glass. And they they devised it the way they did to show show the imperial pint glass again for us, please, Rich. But they've had that longer than they've had nitrogenation. But nitrogenation was created to mimic the beer engine effect, and so the beer engine probably gave you that same big frothy head. Kind of, yeah. So, so, I, but those of you looking, I like at this how this is, picture clearly shows like a light beer. Yeah, <laughs> it, it does show a pretty light beer. But, but you can see that if you were to stack those imperial pints on each on top of each other, that that bulge would prevent <laughs> shipping. That that bulge. Do you like? <laughs> All right. I got a couple oh, of. I'm uh, messing. Oh yeah, well, I've got a couple let's, of imperial. Stack this them. is actually an imperial pint. This is not an imperial pint. This is an uh, imperialized American pint. Uh, they're just slightly different sizes there. But, uh, yeah, the, the reason why we're talking about, you can see how when you put those together, I don't know if it's easy to see like that, but when you put those together, the tips of the glass right Just here, trust not, us. Yeah. The tips of the glass are about, what is Quarter of a centimeter, or half a centimeter. A centimeter? Dude, what do you want? One third, one third of a centimeter? One third of an inch. <laughs> Centimeters. So you can see that the lips won't touch, and that's, you know, that's very 
Mormon. All right, so we've got some disagreement, and uh, I'm probably right, but I, that's I cool. Would, oh, yes! This one may be one that I can research and win. Actually, probably, because I, I might have misread what I was... <laughs> What, what, I, what I had dug up, but that's fine, because I want to talk about the flute glass next. The flute? Yeah, there, here, here we have a picture of a flute glass. I don't think I And it's going to look suspiciously similar to a champagne glass, and that is, is because it was inspired by the champagne glass. It, it's very similar, and it, it has two basic functions, two big functions. One is that it holds carbonation. So if you have a beer that's very highly carbonated, you pour it into a flute glass, and it's going to hold its carbonation longer. It's going to release much slower. And w w what do we have here in front of us, Kyle? This is a typically a, a Hefeweizen or an American wheat-style flute glass, which is a larger version of a champagne flute. But what it does is it allows the, the head to, yep. to rest up at the top of the glass, and, and it really provides a big open area for, for a beer that has a large... Uh, you know, foam at the top. You can, yeah, it's got room for it, and you're going to be able to smell it. Uh, it does release more of that odor and aroma more. So you you want that in a beer where the the head is three inches tall on top of the beer. Exactly, and 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 as Kyle said, aromas are definitely accentuated using a flute glass. Color. When when you have a beer that had, that that the color is very important to to judging, you want to pour it in a flute glass. Because that also showcases the color, some something yep. that you know not everybody's going to think about. It doesn't necessarily make your beer taste better, but to some some brewers, is very important. Color and clarity, yeah. Big. So beers that you might put in a flute glass. Um, there, there's a relatively new style called beer de champagne, which, as it sounds, is very heavily carbonated. And you would put put that in a flute glass. Okay. Kyle mentioned um, the uh, American half. All the halves. Yeah. Pretty much all the wheat. This one's actually for uh, for the summertime wheat by RAR. So this is one of the RAR glasses. Oh, yeah. that's, so that's a German-style Hefeweizen. Okay. Um, but um, fantastic beer, by the way. They do a really good job with that Hef. And um, Icebach might be poured into a flute glass, and Icebach would be poured in for the aroma. Icebach? I wouldn't. No, I would think like ice block would um, be more in a flute glass. According to my research, or, ice well, block. Yeah, in a small flute. If you're going like champagne flute, yeah. Yeah. Well, because flute. Oh, kinda, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah, sorry, yeah I'm, I'm going yeah. back to regular flutes now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, and uh, lambic way. also would be poured into a flute glass. And lambics are generally very highly carbonated, <laughs> and and they also have you tend to have very brilliant color, which is which is something that you would notice. I'll come back over here because the picture was getting awful ugly. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, it, was, it was getting pretty bad. What do we got next? Talk about goblets. Goblets. Goblet is a really cool. Do, do you have a goblet? I don't know. Do I? Actually, well, yeah, actually, yeah. We, we, we were going to pour this into a goblet. A, a goblet is is just a big, wide mouth. That, that's a big, wide mouth glass. Stein? Is no, not a goblet? stein. You've got a goblet. Look, look, look on the very uh, second shelf. From that one? no. <laughs> anyway, so goblet. Where does a boot fit in? Big wide, big wide mouth glass. Rich, can you show the gob goblet, please? Yeah, show me a goblet so I know what I'm looking for. I've never heard of there it. There we go. There's oh, a goblet. Okay, you're talking that as a goblet. Big yeah. wide mouth glass. A, a lot of Belgian beers will go into it. Um, goblets go. tend to there's, hold. There's your there you go. Goblets tend to encourage head retention out of your beer. If you if you have a beer with a really good head, and I think this we, is, we typically in the beer world call this stemware. Yeah, you know, just like both of these together, you know, sifter would be a stemware. You know, yeah, something that's like sort this. of a general term. Yeah, it's a general term. Anything with a stem, yeah, a fluid is technically stemware. Yep, could be. Yep. And given the head retention on this, this would have been really good poured into goblet. Yeah, would have been fine. Yeah, and I mean, we almost did. And chalices are are a bigger, heavier form of goblet, and and I mean, they help with your head retention. They also just look cool. All right, let's move on, man. What's the next one? I had one in my hand. Um, mug. We're gonna talk about mugs next. Hey, mug. Gritty is coming we, up here, yeah, man. We, we've all. Oh my goodness. This, this is this gritty. is a classic Bono and Kyle mug right uh, here. A mug. Got that is mug. Big and heavy and has a handle. This is a good, good, easy to drink glass. Yeah. It, it it's easy to drink out of this. And that is that nitty gritty 
takes a page out of the Mr. Bill's book there in Norman, Oklahoma. Yeah. You know, it's a big, heavy, uh, thick-walled glass that if you're lucky, you can get, what, like eight ounces in here? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and funny you should mention Mr. Bill's because something we, we learned in Mr. Bill's is that mugs are also very good for bar staff because when they're cleaning up, well, we used to have a waiter, and, and, and Tommy might be able to help me on this. He might be able to remember exactly how many. If I'm not mistaken, he could hold 10 to 12 Bill's mugs in one hand. And drink them all at once. And, and drink them all at once. No, but, but he, would come, he would come clean the table, and he would just collect all the mugs into one hand and carry them back to the back. So very good for bar staff as well. Mm -hmm. And beers that really go well in, in a mug are, are just easy drinking beers. I mean, something you want to drink yeah, beers that are liquid. Yeah, beers, like that, beers, beers that have that's a lot of liquid. That's one of my favorites. In them are, are, are typically I like the ones with alcohol, too. Yeah, oh, um, what about the, the ones that have grain? Oh, oh, those are so good. So, what's next, man? Um, we, got our, we got our mug. And you, let's, want, let, you want a Kolsch class? Yeah, let, let's look at one See more. Got We've it. got a... a class, class. And I don't know how to pronounce this German word, stange, but um, it, it's also called a, a Kolsch glass. It's tall... It's tall and thin. In fact, the word stange means stick in German. So, you know, just tall and thin. And the purpose of this particular glass is to emphasize nuances in the malt or the hops. And this is something that if you ever go to a tasting, you'll see that a lot of the tasters have these very tall, thin glasses. And the reason for this is so that they can better ascertain what nuances are in the beer. It's, it's easier to get some of these subtleties. And here, we're, there we go. We have a staunch right From here. From St. Arnold's Kolsch. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it's also called a Kolsch glass, which is very fitting. Because yeah. Kolsch is nothing if not subtle. I drank, and the, there's a difference between a Kolsch glass and an alt glass. When we were in Germany a while back uh, for one night, we... Uh, well, it was a night and a half quarter of a day. I mean, we were there for forever. But anyway, the the alt glass is just slightly wider, slightly bigger. Yeah. Um, you know, because they look at you kind of funny when you order an alt over there in the trendy areas like yeah. we were. They're like, oh, an alt. That's a dark beer. And, you, know, wow. all, you know, it's not really a dark beer. But and, anyway, and, and the stones fun. does come in all different sizes. I, I know uh, Boddington's is served in one a lot of times. And Boddington, really? yeah, that that's in, why in, it should be served in an imperial pint. It, it should be, but uh, whenever you get Boddington's of the saucer, it's going to come in in a Boddington's branded staunch. Really? Yeah. Okay. In fact, uh, it was the mug night one year, one night a few years back on. Uh, I Halloween. believe. You. I believe you. So um, anyway, that's just so. Where's where's this one fit in? I, I don't know. Where, where does that fit in? I, I don't know. The, qu the quack. That is the quack glass. The quack glass, uh, you can see it's, they actually, it's such a funny shape, and it's got the, the bell at the bottom, and it, and it comes up to a flute at the top. Uh, they designed that glass specifically for that beer. And this is a Belgian brewery, and Belgians are huge about their glassware. Yeah, they, they really are. Belgians love their glassware. If they do not have the glass that says North Coast to serve their North Coast beer that we're drinking... A crock out. Yeah, or a might well, out or they might as well not even drink it. Don't. They won't serve it to you. Yeah. If they don't have a glass clean, they'll say, "I'm sorry, we're out of those glasses." So, <laughs> what are you gonna do, right? Yeah. You know, you, you're over there. You can't drink that beer. So, pick another one. <clears throat> but before we sign off, I want to revisit the chalk. Okay. Because when we were talking about earlier, we were talking about style. Mm -hmm. We were looking at it as a Baltic porter. Right. Let's look at this as a beer. Well, Rich, what is our alcohol hit? Did you ever find that? Yeah, I checked all the uh, sites, and nobody's got a number on it. I mean, uh, have you checked uh, check Beer Advocate? Yeah, the Beer Advocate and Rate Beer both have a question mark or a dash. Wow. Sloppy. Sloppy. Okay. And then if you search on oh. Google, it comes up with everybody's chocolate winter beer. So They don't have to, uh, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, they don't have to tell you what it is in Oklahoma, so they obviously didn't. Yeah, clearly Get out not. your graduated cylinders, folks. I, I have a feeling it's a big beer, though, because you, you can taste a little bit of alcohol. Is that feeling it. inebriation? Potentially. Potent we'll, we'll revisit that a little bit later um, after so, the show while I'm trying to sleep. One thing that we're going to be doing from now on is is actually rating beers on our own. Yes, that's right. We're going to be tracking these, and uh, we built a little spreadsheet. We're fancy. And so as, 
We're going to be doing this. Um, As a Baltic Porter, because it is claims to be a Baltic Porter. Claims to be a Baltic Porter. I would go mid-30s, mid, mid, mid to high 30s. Right, give it your number. 37. This is based on a 0 to 50 scale, zero to 50 scale. as BJCP would. We decided we're going to make our ratings based on a shooting from the hip. Here's our number. Boom, we're drinking it. Here's our number. Typically, typically out of judging, you, you would have a very, um, <clears throat> very, very stratified sheet where, where you would give points for aroma, points for carbonation, whatever. But we're just going to say it's this, and I'm going to go with 30, 37. I'm going to go 32. Um, okay. I, I, and typically, you'll find I'm a, I'm a tougher judge than most. So um, if I get anything into the 40s, you know, that, that means it's just phenomenal. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to go 32 and, on this. See, and, and at, to style. I, I, go, I go high 30s because it, it is good. I mean, it's, I don't, it, it's not flawed. No. It, it's a good drink. It's just not to style. Yeah. So I, I guess we just grade that differently. Well, no, and we're within five points. Yeah, and that's just the way BJCP five, so wants to good. be. We're, we're well within our, our normal range. of and, and typically, I've brewed with a lot of, or excuse me, I've judged with a lot of different people. And you judge with a lot of different people when you find out that, uh, you know, I'm usually three to five yeah, points yeah, lower. are pretty low. I, I'm kind of a dick. Except when we're rating our beers, at which point I'm low. No. Yeah, so that happens. Really? You're lower than me? I always rate our beers kind of low. Except for ones I'm enthusiastic about that you're not. <laughs> Then you rate them lower. Isn't that weird? That, that is very bizarre. So the ones that he designs the recipe, for some reason, he rates higher. The ones that I design the recipe, for some reason, I rate higher. It's, it's a weird. 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 It's, well, hold on. Let, let's, let's look into that. Let, okay. me, let me write that down. Write that down. You should take the cap off. No. Okay. Well, this was a fun show, and I, I'd like to say we're going to have to bump our equipment section to another week. Yeah, I think that we are. I mean, we, we barely made it through the glassware, yep. but... Um, what what did we learn tonight? Well, we talked about RAR and what they're going to be doing uh, in the near future with their Imperial October, or excuse me, their Imperial uh, Oatmeal Stout, and that they're going to be open for their tours two times a day the entire week before the Super Bowl. That's phenomenal. We, we learned that Chalk Winter is a delicious porter, but not a delicious Baltic porter. I would agree with that. And then we uh, we learned that Brew Buddy is fun to watch. We we did learn so that. So we're going to post that up to where it's easier for people to find and watch our Brew Buddy commercial. And and we also learned that um, oatmeal gives you a thick, velvety, creamy mouthfeel. Mark, thanks for that, buddy. <laughs> I, I thought I thought you'd appreciate that. So until next week, keep drinking, and always remember that we are not professionals. So please try this at home. Frustration, the memorization of the things I'm gonna do to you. This magical and powerful addiction to the pain affliction on your porcelain skin.